Hi there, and welcome to episode 43 of the Savage Lands Season 2. And today, well, it's a quite big day for me and this series, because I figured that in the last episode, we have achieved most of the things that were really, you know, I want to say worth mentioning, but many of the things of the adventure ahead are kind of repetitive at this point. We have secured access to adamantine in a really, really good way, and currently my forces are rampaging through the south. So the idea that I got, and an idea that I want to follow in the upcoming Season 3, so that's why it's important, is I'm going to play this site uh, site. This uh, episode, there, this uh, word slipped into my mouth, um, a little bit off camera and I'll be focusing on the events that are in between when they happen. So, you know, currently we are in a very, very good pacing of constantly mopping down those uh, goblins and still digging deeper into the adamantine mines. This has been the concept since a couple of episodes, but those episodes before, we have actually didn't strike adamantine. Now we actually did, and now I gotta say, well, we're going to go and execute murder's glory on those uh, goblins in the south, and I figured it would be quite fun to just, uh, you know, follow the story picture by picture, and I'm going to give you guys highlights about how things go and you let me know in the comment section how you like that new format because I personally want to tell the stories a little bit faster and let the upcoming seasons of the Savage Lands have less episodes and a little bit more of action. Let me know what you think. And now we have a war to win. There is enough reason for a small update. Not only did we destroy one of those uh, wicked goblin settlements. No, no. I was also just doing casually my thing, what every dwarven miner does down here, laying down the glass blocks and this, you know, this is bad news. This is the place that we shall not breach and I just wanted to give it a showcase, you know, we found one entrance to the underworld. If you'd be opening that, Demons would be swarming over our place, but luckily the dwarves of the Towers of Age are small, smarter than that. We also had a uh, bit of a siege happening in between, while the whole military was not around, but luckily by the flick of a switch we just locked ourselves in until the military arrived and uh, went on with brutal carnage. There has been one Mace Dwarf lost, though, in the action of that, which is uh, quite, frankly said, a tragedy. But, you know, war means losses, we all, we all know that. But the good news about that, we actually made it down that far. The bad news, this also limits the amount of adamantine that we can get out of this uh, vein, for real, so probably we're going to need more than this one vein to actually fulfill the needs for adamantine for this fortress. That would be really, really bad news, quite objectively said, because that would mean that we really need to yeah, do all that one more time. But we'll see about that, we'll see about that. Anywho, meanwhile, we're expanding, we're raiding goblins, and I'll let you know when something fancy happens in between. After a while of plundering and sieging the goblins, a few things have happened in this time. So we are in the late summer by now. I have decided to found a new squad of armed forces because I felt like it's about time that we take those resources we got. I got by now a really, really majestic stockpile of steel to a new level, you know? It's been about time that we were actually using more than what we got, because we might make nice progress so far, but I do see that it feels like the pathing and the traveling between sites is one of the most time-consuming efforts, and at the end of the day, I do like to have one armed, uh, armed squad at all times in my fortress. 
On the other hand, well, we do make that slow progress that we have to do while engraving and, and carving the walls and getting deeper into the secrets of the mountain. We have now got ourselves a staircase downstairs to hell or right next to the underworld. I guess if you would be working there, you might be hearing scary scraping sounds or stuff like that. I bet whatever is behind that wall is very, very eager to get out of there. Anywho, in the time between, you know, things are working out as usual. We do have, though, a higher influx of ever unhappier dwarves. So that's one thing that does make me a little bit nervous. But, you know, we did have some losses and uh, we have here tattered clothing, though, turning into a bit of a problem. This is a typical thing that happens in many late game fortresses of mine that the clothing industry is just not keeping up with the needs of the fortress. I mean, one clothier's shop is probably by now also a little bit of a undersupply of workforces. Be that as it may, I'm going to work around these and change the industry up and bolster it a little bit while we were we will proceed with the warfare. There is not that much happening these days. We have a constant work forward. We do craft an artifact from time to time, but uh, Shinmistum dwarves are are really quite resilient at doing their thing in all time at all point. Well, we will see how things will go forward from here. I'll let you know once I know, and until then, we will just proceed as we proceeded the whole time. It's getting more and more exciting to be down here, especially since the environment is quite hostile, but uh, you know, currently we really, really do need more adamantine and I'm working really, really hard on fulfilling that. Apart from that, not that much has happened and I'll keep you guys posted about the Great Goblin War. Things stay like a very, very uncomfortable fight. Whenever we take down a few of, the, of their pits, a new one emerges. Bridled Seduce has been rebuilt. The foul pits in the south have been rebuilt. It feels as if wherever we close one door, the goblins are just opening yet another. It's therefore a pretty difficult war that we are fighting. But uh, on the other hand, we are doing really, really fine. The only thing that's not working out so fine is the happiness inside the fortress. People are growing restless. I think mostly, well, I actually don't really understand what's making most of them unhappy. Experiencing trauma and major in, uh, injuries, well, we were getting attacked quite often and the military, well, the military is not too happy. Some people are meditating on weird things. But all in all, the situation in the fortress is stable. You know, we are not on the brink of uh, annihilation. But uh, all in all, those uh, recurring attacks from the goblins, I think these things are currently turning into more and more of a problem. The only good news that we got is by now we have a second squad being able to roam through the lands and destroying enemies. On the other hand, we have made really huge progress on the Hall of Legends. Doesn't look look nice. I ordered the last few um, missing diorite statues. The, the adamantine mines, well, it's a painstaking and slow progress. I can't put it into different words. It's just very, very difficult to get ourselves through all this, especially since down here we cannot use the scrying method so well anymore because, you know, we have to carve our way through lots of uh, hostile territory. Basically, every step forward we take has to be carefully probed and carefully scanned before we can do anything. I also ordered a new batch of glass blocks to be made, but as you see here, here is also progress only ever so slowly being made. All in all, it's a very ungrateful and uh, grinding business to take out the enemy forces down there. Especially due to the recolonization efforts of the goblins, I feel like it's really, really about time 
that I truly consider oh wait a sec that's foolish to um you know gear myself up and make probably even a fifth squad you know why not we really do need as much fighting power as we can possibly muster and uh well the the earlier we get to it the better and therefore well these are only thoughts because a part of me is currently very very alarmed about the uh, rate of rebuild that the goblins feature here we're really making very very slow progress on the map it does look quite nice but uh, these three new blots that have popped up it always takes a lot of time the biggest enemy that i have found so far is the time that my dwarves need to actually leave the map this is uh, by far the most time-consuming part of the whole warfare. So if I have learned anything, anything out of this whole conquest, then it is that if I ever build another fortress whose whole purpose is to make warfare as efficient as possible, I'm going to think twice or even thrice about where I put down those darn barracks for those soldiers, because I feel like that's where I probably did the worst of my mistakes with this fortress but beyond that well what can i say business is going quite well we do not go and proceed as fast as i would like to but as you see here there's a constant progress that's being made the only thing that's bothering me adamantine has not really been uh, processed in any meaningful tempo we let's see how many adamantine wafers do we have by now So, thirty-seven. This looks, on the first glance, like a nice number. Oh, we've been announced a county. Nice. Um, what a nice surprise. So, uh, well, let's see how the last report was. Bridal seduce has been destroyed. That's good. So, yeah, we're we're drawing our circles. We have by now a Count, Count English, no longer Baron English. I really think he deserved. I really, really think he deserved, especially considering all the heroic deeds that Shin Mistum did for all of Dwarvenkind here. I really, really appreciate that. All right, my friends, I'll keep you posted how the conquest goes. So, our troops returned from yet another victorious moment, but there is one tad of a problem. The Inky Howls are usually sitting here in their barracks, but, uh, you know, we have a new unwelcome guest down here. One who's also capable of breathing fire, so I'm not really sure how things will now play out. I, I really wonder how and where my, my friends will arrive. But uh, I, I do fear that we might be attacked on our way here. That would be a little bit unfortunate, but I, I really hope that uh, that is not going to happen. It's all going to be the question, where do our people arrive? The thing is, the Inky Howls really love to depart from the map on the same, in the same vicinity where, where the monster was at. So I'm really... Um, yeah, this is going to be a very interesting moment for, for this whole conquest, I'd say. It's a fire-breathing monster, you know? I really don't know how well my friends would fare against that. Currently, currently I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit angsty about that, but we'll see. We'll see. Let's unpause the game and see what'll happen. I just went to catch that very moment, you know? Probably nothing will happen. Probably they'll just enter the map from the surface level and uh, get in there on the surface level, but... Yeah, well, it's just a cave croc and the forgotten beast fighting. So, tension is rising. But on the other hand, we're making great progress down there with the gobs. The fourth squad has been a very, very nice investment. The only thing that's bothering me is that with the current pace of things, I really don't see us 
featuring any squad using adamantine mainly. So the amount we were procuring down there was uh, very, very meager to say the least. And uh, currently we're also making very, very slow progress. Down here we even have the first case of semi-molten rock. That means we are not able to progress down there that easily. In case you don't know, uh, the semi-molten rock is unminable stuff that is uh, happening down here. Just stuff you can't, you can't properly access it. So, no, oh, where where are my friends at? <laughs> so, I really want to check on my on my squad. Yeah, they come from the surface, so we are safe in that regard. I really don't want to open up another uh, corridor for that. Well. Seems like we got of lucky this time. I'll keep you friends posted and let you know how long that luck lasts. After a while, more goblins fell. As you can see, we're making nice progress. It's now late autumn and, well, the monster did not enter the fortress, but, well, let's say it claimed the whole environment. That Forgotten Beast here is now the real master of the underground here, as you can see. There's scorched earth everywhere, literally. But on the other hand, none of my soldiers wanted to go ever this way again. There have been no pathing problems. So I think Lithimi is going to live here. Check this out. I mean, this thing has already 23 kills under its buckle. I mean, it does kill also my FPS a little bit, but only a little bit. All the fire, you know, it's always kind of FPS hog. So the other thing that's occurring here, we have found a white specter. Nice little blob composed of salt. We're going to take care of that little creature here with our uh, military in between two sessions. I think the Inky Howls will be uh, taking care of that thing really quickly. And yeah, it's it's the same progression there. The only thing that's really worth mentioning currently is that the adamantine mine has turned into a whole, wholesale nightmare. As you can see here, it's all full of water. We have almost no area to stand on there's water here's water so i decided that we're going to work with a uh, screw pump because i i don't know how to help myself otherwise anymore so we're going to pump this place dry and then let's see we need to gather more of that sweet sweet adamantine otherwise we'll be uh, out of chances also the inky howls have to take care of that little blob of salt the thing is it's um whenever a a, a creature whoa a ghostly miner is throwing a tantrum, okay. Um, whenever a creature is um, composed of salt and those things, they usually are really no big match for a properly um, geared up uh, squad. So, miner is throwing a tantrum possessed by Stukos. All right. So, uh, here we have a, uh, a ghost making a tantrum happen. I haven't seen that before, in, uh, to be quite honest. So, yeah, Conquest will go on. We're going to, uh, going to keep you guys posted. I felt like this is worth mentioning that we're going to have to dry up the mines now. And, well, we'll see how all these things uh, proceed here. Forgotten Beast has taken, the, has taken the caverns, and in all honesty, we don't really notice any difference. So let's quickly take out that creature, or at least I hope to. Well, let's wait until the military is stationed there and then we'll take it out. Anywho, I'll keep you guys posted when the next bigger turn of events happens. Oh, here's the update. During a tragic accident, one of my miners died when we took out the monster there. I'm quite sad that this actually happened, because I didn't really see it coming. We do make our progresses here, as you see. We're destroying pit by pit, and yeah, it's, it's, it's going forward. We 
Uh, well, we also just uh, incinerated a cook. Such is life. I was hoping that when I was digging a, uh, a fortification like that, people won't die. But, well, I'm still experimenting on the safest ways of uh, getting these jobs done. This was obviously not the safe way. Be that as it may, we are also currently, well, quite regularly being besieged. That's uh, another thing that happens, but we fend that off quite well. What I also wanted to show off was uh, this wonderful, magnificent artifact that came together. This is a pair of adamantine greaves. You know, it's not only adamantine greaves, we, uh, we also have a lot of um, goblin killing going on on this thing so it's uh it's definitely definitely fit to be part of the fortresses uh well how to call it standard inventory i found that really really um funny amusing you know because uh you know so darn fitting. I love it when things uh, have, uh, go together like that. And the most uh, cool thing about it is it depicts goblin killing in the year 77. That's way before our civilization was doing their thing. So basically this... Uh, I take this as a reminder that us dwarves, we were fighting these evils since long, uh, since a long, long time. So I really like that one. I really got to stop incinerating my poor workers though when I open up lava pockets like that. Problem is, I can't stave them, uh, stake them open from up, uh, up above, or or can I? Well, that would have worked here. Darn. Well, I'll be. No, it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> no. As you see here, things are getting a little bit more problematic <laughs> with these little things. But yeah, we'll be getting there. We'll be getting there. I promise. And. Over the course of the next few years, I can already foresee that we're going to be able to fight back these creatures properly. But there's always the problem that sometimes those sites just don't get destroyed. I haven't fully understood yet where the um, what's the logic behind that in terms of the game, but uh, well... Probably somebody can enlighten me. Until then, well, I'll keep you posted. All right, so I encountered a bug and I, I actually had to figure out how to resolve it. So I figured that I probably want to let you guys uh, know as well. So what has happened is that the daggers of watching and the walled kingdoms got somehow lost in transition. They never reached their spot. I tried to cancel their assignment. I tried to move them from the squad, as you see there. We have, I have deleted the mission. They're just not coming back at this very moment and that's quite uh, disturbing to me. And to make matters worse, um, you cannot assign a new commander until the old commander has been replaced because, you know, the, the commander of your military forces has to appoint new commanders, so to say. So this guy here, the militia commander, if he's not at home, you cannot found a new squad, period. So what I did here was uh, I I went in here and I I removed the leader in his absence. So this was the only way that I that I figured to to remove that problem. And uh, most in interestingly here, then I was able to get up a new uh, militia commander for that. I really have no clue where that person left. Got, got left off, he's gone for good, and uh, I have to reallocate those squads. I don't know if these guys will actually show up again sooner or later, or if they are now um, properly lost, but if that ever happens to you, that's the only way that I found to resolve it um, without, uh, without any bigger issues. I'm a little bit unhappy about that, because that means I've just literally lost the entire gear for these guys for no reason at all basically and that's gonna hurt us a lot because we have to reforge all that stuff and uh, and whatnot but the good news behind all that is uh, still we have plundered so much gear that I'm actually quite positive that we might be able to to gear those guys out somehow but still it's a really nasty bug and I've been waiting for a pretty long time for these guys to return and they just didn't there was 
no readout, no notification, no nothing. I, I somewhat expect them to also be lost forever. I mean, my population hasn't uh, risen b um, yet, so that means our two squads here have b have to be fully repurposed. Or, or wait a sec, these guys, they are too good. They are too good to be... Uh... Oh, looks like people are getting back from that. Okay. So I don't have that many Grandmasters and Legendary people um, in, my, in my back pocket, so to say. Yeah, here we go. So, anywho, I just wanted to um, showcase that because it was the first time that this uh, happened to me and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be the only person that's uh, going to be a victim of this uh, wicked phenomenon, so... Yeah, but uh, I feel like not all of the uh, people came back and uh, I have that slight feeling as if I will be watching a lot of new gear. A lot of new gear. So let's see how bad it is. So, yep, it is super bad. As you see here, we have lots of uh, red um, squares here. That means every red square here is a missing piece of gear, so that's uh, showing me quite directly that these pe people didn't come back, all of them. Well, that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty uh, harsh thing, but uh, we're going to go through that. At least I was able to assign new people into the uh, rank of squad leaders because for a moment. It was like uh, not even possible anymore to assign new squads when I realized that the commander has to be in house for new squads to be assigned. I panicked a little bit for a moment, but luckily I was able to uh, unassign the commander in his absence. So, yeah, hopefully that'll be helpful for other people as well. And until then, I will continue with Merry Goblin Slaughtering. So, it is beyond any doubt, the Walled Kingdoms and the Daggers of Watching have disappeared. They ceased to exist, however you want to put it. No, none of them came ever back. It seems as if I actually had a few legendary warriors left that were not bound in any squad, but still the, the verdict is quite depressing. We have lost just around 20 of our most talented warriors here without even knowing to what. I must say, the goblin trickery goes deeper than I originally thought, and maybe I underestimated our enemy. He seems to be definitely capable of pulling off things that are way beyond dwarven uh, understanding, and I think we really gotta be more careful with our enemy. So, in a nutshell, I think this campaign will continue in destroying all the goblin pits in the south, but I think it is time to accept that an evil that is around here since year one and another fortress like this here, maybe it is the duty of brightness portals to watch over over the foulness of the uh, of the southern areas here. But I really wonder how long will it take until all those creatures will just respawn and come back and do what they did before. So it is a little bit of a uh, difficult situation for me, but uh, I'll end this episode with that thought. So I have also ordered a big amount of new gear. We have ordered lots of uh, steel gear. I have ordered pig iron and steel bars. We are again delving for dolomite. Well, I do what I have to do to fill up the blank spots, but with the demise of my two strongest squadrons, I, well, I grew a little bit weary in question of uh, taking down those fortresses. We also haven't had the desired adamantine amounts. It turns clearer and clearer that actually we would have needed at least two of these uh, tubes to complete the the whole thing and ah yeah this is also uh, the flecked curses are asking for parlays so that brought me up to the question could it be that it had been the 
black curses or uh, sorry the horrors of drinking and the black curses that have plotted to the theft of the artifact in the temple of Vukar well these are questions that we can't really answer for today my friends and I'm going to end today's episode with a bit of a, uh, a bit of melancholy because of the fallen heroes that have disappeared I take them as victims of a foul curse that led them to wander endlessly in the cursed southern lands officially it's a bug but uh, you know I'll just weave it into the uh, into the narrative because that makes things way more interesting way more exciting and it's a way for me to swallow the uh, the insight that well I just have lost my my most powerful squad to a bug and uh, calling it goblin trickery at least gives me the feeling that the story goes on due to that anywho my good friends I hope you were enjoying we're going to continue this in the next episode and I think this will be also pretty soon, pretty soon-ish, the end of this uh, second season. Because once we have cleared out the goblins here in the south, I think I will retire Brightness Portals with the thought of an eternal vigilant watch over the southern pits. And if ever the goblins will emerge in too large numbers again, I'll just uh, fire up this fortress and uh, take them down one more time. This is a pretty big siege, though. All right, guys. So uh, let's take a uh, let's take a glorious fight as an outro. I really hope that uh, it will be a glorious fight, or uh, will it? So these guys are rookies, you know. Let's see if the, how this goes. Yeah, not good. So. Uh, Obviously, we're losing even more people here. So, Brightness Portals is not seeing its finest time here. As you see here, the losses have been too heavy. And, oh yeah, I can already see that. The Walled Kingdoms and the Daggers of Watching are merely falling. So, oh uh, yeah, well. I already know how this will go in the end. We're just going to to wait until the uh, more powerful squads are back, but all these events they are uh, they are really really unfavorable to say the least. So um, yeah, we have to pull the emergency lever and uh, leave this episode with a pretty pretty unfavorable outcome. And uh, well, hopefully next episode we will be able to take down what we need to take down. Let's see how the bridge ratchets up. And with that, I leave you guys for today. So leave me your comments. Leave me your thumbs up on that episode. Let me know how you how you feel about this new format with all the time skips and all. I personally like it a lot more this way. Because we can bring in much more story and much less video. But uh, I leave that up to you. And uh, we're going to continue in the next episode. See you guys there and have a good one.